and I'll tell you a small anecdote or incident of that evening, 14th February evening, when I was going for a conference after this Alwama blast to work out the strategy for the future. A young captain, Captain Sandeep Singh, who was my ADC, he was traveling with me in the vehicle. And as mm. any other young man, he was also anxious as to what will happen now. So he asked me, you talked about what were your feelings. So he asked me in the vehicle, sir, ab kya hoga? So my answer to him was, pardon my language, my answer to him was, we will get the bastards. And that's exactly what we did in next 100 hours. So my immediate point was, let's get back and hit the module which has carried out this uh, attack. As you would remember, the Pakistani trolls and ISPR handles had started trolling India as a nation. There's a very famous dialogue of a Hindi movie, How is the Josh? So since this attack was carried out by Jash e Muhammad, they started trolling, how is the Jash? So we as a team security forces, that is Army, CRPF, Jammu Kashmir Police, intelligence agencies and civil administration, had to hit back. So we got after this module. The leader of the module was Kamran, a Pakistani terrorist, whose code name was Ghazi. And within 100 hours, in fact, within 72 hours, we hunted down this module in a small village called Pinglana in South Kashmir. And a joint operation was launched within 100 hours. The people who had carried out the Pulwama ID blast, that is Kamran alias Ghazi, they were eliminated. And the morale of the nation and the Pakistani trolls from how is the Jash came back to how is the Josh. Every time we killed a Pakistani terrorist, a letter used to be from his pocket and his code name used to be invariably Ghazi. So a lot of Ghazi have been killed in the past. So when this journalist asked me the question, sir, is Ghazi dead? I didn't want to give much credence to this terrorist. So my answer was, kitne Ghazi aaye, kitne Ghazi gaye, parwani, don't worry, we are there. When Pakistani terrorists give themselves the code name Ghazi, they are taking their inspiration from Muhammad Ghazni who in the history has attacked by Indian territory a number of times. But after this attack of Pulwama and elimination of this Ghazi and one or more after that who was named the commander of Jashim Muhammad, so history is being reversed. Muhammad Ghazni came to a door. In today's door, no Ghazi can come to the world of Hindustan. अपनी इच्छा से नहीं आ सकता आ गया तो वापस नहीं जाएगा हेलो एंड वेलकम टू हिंदुस्तान टाइम्स एंड आई एम ऑनर्ड टू बी जॉइन टुडे इन दिस स्पेशल पॉडकास्ट विद बाय लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल केजीएस ढिलन और टाइनी ढिलन एज ही इज मोर पॉपुलरली नोन एज आई डोंट नो व्हाई सर टाइनी यू आर कॉल्ड बिकॉज़ यू आर अपेरेंटली ओवर 6 फीट बट ही इज द मैन बिहाइंड eliminating Jaish Muhammad leadership in the valley in less than 100 hours of the deadly Pulwama terrorist attack now remember when the Pulwama attack took place uh, he had barely taken charge of the 15 corp uh, within a couple of days uh, in a joint operation by the uh, forces led of course by lieutenant general Tyne Dillon three Jaish Muhammad leaders were eliminated including Kamran also known as Ghazi Rashid um uh, and a very close aide of Ma- Ma- masood azhar so uh, i'm very excited to have you here today sir uh, but i want to start a conversation about uh, the immediate aftermath of the pulwama attack the encounter uh, following that and uh, we'll talk about a lot more over the next uh, half an hour 45 minutes let me start however with uh, kamran the jaish mohammad leader the mastermind of the pulwama attack and how he was killed how that entire encounter came about good evening aditi and uh, the reference you made to ghazi or the original name was kamran as you rightly said i had taken over the 15 core command on 10th of february 2019 and this unfortunate incident where we lost 40 crpf brevards in the pulwama id blast happened on 14th february 2019 that is just about 4 days after i had taken over the command of chinarkor when this incident happened after that 
everyone was getting into as to why this happened, why the drills were this, why ROP, why no bulletproof for the number of vehicles in a convoy. So all these things are a matter of detail, which would have come out in an inquiry. So my immediate point was, let's get back and hit the module which has carried out this uh, attack. As you would remember, the Pakistani trolls and ISPR handles had started trolling India as a nation. There's a very famous dialogue of a Hindi movie, How is the Josh? So since this attack was carried out by Jash Muhammad, they started trolling, how is the Jash? So we as a team security forces, that is Army, CRPF, Jammu Kashmir Police, intelligence agencies and civil administration, had to hit back. So we got after this module. The leader of the module was Kamran, a Pakistani terrorist, whose code name was Ghazi. And within 100 hours, in fact, within 72 hours, we hunted down this module in a small village called Pinglana in South Kashmir. And a joint operation was launched of Army, Jammu Kashmir Police and CRPF. And we surrounded this village or the house where Kamran and his accomplices were hiding. Major Vibhuti Dondial and few Jawans, they made the supreme sacrifice in the initial few minutes of the operation commencing. But heads off to 55 Rashtra rifles, in spite of initial setbacks, they did not lose the initiative. They maintained the contact with the terrorist. And within 100 hours, the people who had carried out the Pulwama ID blast, that is Kamran alias Ghazi, they were eliminated. And the morale of the nation and the Pakistani trolls from how is the Jash came back to how is the Josh. So this is, a, in a nutshell, what happened after Pulwama and how team security forces in a joint operation relentlessly carried out the operation for the next 72 hours to sniff out this module and eliminate it. And that is when the leader of the group, whose code name was Ghazi, came the famous uh, line, Kitre Ghazi Aai, Kitre Ghazi Gai, which also is the title of my book, in which I have given more details about this operation and many other things. You know, and that's where I want to come to that press conference you did immediately after that encounter. And usme aapne famously bola tha ki kitne gazi aaye, kitne gazi gaye. How do you, uh, you know, uh, obviously the 72 hours that followed after Pulwama, you had just taken charge. What was, uh, you know, you must have gotten inkling uh, or some uh, intelligence that these terrorists were hiding out there. And therefore you, you went and, you know, you surrounded that area, you, you and your team. Were there any moments at that time? What was running through your mind? Were there nervous moments? Will, will this happen? Was the team morale down at any point? As an army man or as a security forces man, firstly, nervousness we cannot allow to overtake our resolve. Because any incident like this where we suffer losses, we don't get nervous, we get more resolute. We have a bigger resolve to go and hit back. So this is exactly what happened. And I'll tell you a small anecdote or incident of that evening, 14th February evening, when I was going for a conference after this Palwama blast to work out the strategy for the future. A young captain, Captain Sandeep Singh, who was my ADC, he was traveling with me in the vehicle. And as mm. any other young man, he was also anxious as to what will happen now. So he asked me, you talked about what were your feelings. So he asked me in the vehicle, Sir, ab kya hoga? So my answer to him was, pardon my language, my answer to him was, we will get the bastards. And that's exactly what we did in next 100 hours. You talked about the intelligence. Yes. Again, this aspect I've covered in great detail in the book. But what happens is, after such an incident, as we see in the Hindi movies, whenever a major strike is done, all these elements are told to go underground. Abhi ab underground ho jau. We did not want these people to get go underground. So we carried out operations in all the areas where we thought they could be, where there was 50% surety, or where we had the background information of their sympathizers. We did not let them get into a safe hideout. If they do not get into a safe hideout, they will move from place to place. 
And when they move from place to place, they will make communication with the next place where they wanted to go to tie up the logistics and they will physically move. This is exactly what we wanted. We wanted them to physically move so that they can be seen. And we wanted them to make communication so that they can be intercepted. And our success came within 72 hours. We hunted them down in Palawa Pinglana. And we were also very sure they are going to leave that place in next three to four hours. We had very limited time. And the Army and the CRPF and JK police carried out a quick, a quick appreciation of the situation and surrounded that Pinglana village from multiple directions to maintain surprise. And there afterwards, as I said earlier, the contact happened, the elimination of the group happened within 100 hours. And in that press conference, a journalist asked me, because for the last three days, the local media especially was abuzz with this, Ghazi is the commander and Ghazi has carried out Pulwama attack. Ghazi has carried out an attack on India, so to say. So in the mm. press conference, a journalist asked me a question, sir, is Ghazi dead? I didn't want to give much credence to this terrorist. And Ghazi, by the way, is a very preferred code word by the Pakistani terrorist. Since mm. I had multiple tenures in Kashmir, since my captain days, every time we killed a Pakistani terrorist, a letter used to be from his pocket and his code name used to be invariably Ghazi. So a lot of Ghazi have been killed in the past. So when this journalist asked me the question, sir, is Ghazi dead? I didn't want to give much credence to this terrorist. So my answer was, Kitne Ghazi aaye, Kitne Ghazi gaye, Parwani, don't worry, we are there. So this line became very catchy and viral. And as I said earlier, this is also the title of a book, Kitne Ghazi aaye, Kitne Ghazi gaye. I have goosebumps uh, while hearing you on this. But how many Ghazi came, how many Ghazi came, what is the significance of this term for you? This term's significance is historical. Hai. When Pakistani terrorists give themselves the code name Ghazi, they are taking their inspiration from Muhammad Ghazni, who in the history has attacked Indian territory a number of times. But after this attack of Pulwama and elimination of this Ghazi and one or more after that who was named the commander of Jashim Muhammad, they have to keep this code name as Because the team security forces, the type of operations they are carrying out in Kashmir and the type of assistance and information which we are getting from the locals. Now, those who leadership Somali terrorist group ki wo gya. that's why today no one wants to become a leader of a terrorist tanzim and no one wants to keep the code name ghazi so history is being reversed mohammed ghazni aaya tha wo ek daur tha aaj ke daur mein koi ghazi hindustan ki sarzumi ke upar apni ichha se nahi aa sakta aa gaya to wapas nahi jayega this is a you can say a promise to every countryman press conference mein, at the same press conference you gave out a very stern message to youngsters something akin to what you're saying right now and you said you pick up the gun you are dead and then you appeal to the mothers of the valley what was your sentiment behind that tough talk ma'am as a military commander who is responsible for the line of control against the pakistan army who is also responsible for carrying out counter terrorist operations within the valley in conjunction with other security forces I have to wear two hats. One is a strong military man who would hit at anything which is trying to do any mischief on the line of control or within the valley. At the same time, I have to have a very, very soft heart because we are working in an environment where awam, the population is there. We need to be very friendly, very transparent and no collateral damage. So this uh, state two statement which you are what you are narrating or which you are referring to. Yes, I had to be very firm and I gave a message. You pick up a gun, you are dead unless you surrender. And at the same time, since I had the multiple tenures in Kashmir, every time since my captain days of September 1988, I have had six tenures in Kashmir in various ranks. So every time in those days, if a terrorist was killed, a letter used to be found in his pocket 
which he had written to his mother or it has been received from other and it is in his pocket because those days mobiles were not there. So that letter invariably with the mother of a local Kashmiri terrorist gave me this feeling that Kashmiri boys are very attached to their mothers. And with my number of tenures, when I interacted more with the Kashmiri population and found out more about how they live in the, live their lives, I realized Kashmiri boys are very close to their mother. In any society, mother's role is very, very important, but it has got a very pronounced relevance in Kashmiri society. So after having told that you pick up a gun, you are dead unless you surrender. I made an appeal to the mothers that please tell your children, tell your youngster, tell your sons to return. I do not use the word surrender. I generally use the word return. And the three promises which were made, which were fulfilled, which made this oppression successful. This oppression came to be known as Operation Mark because we appealed to the mothers. First one was when the terrorist comes back, his there will be no police case made against him. Second was he will be given an alternate placement. And third was his identity will be kept secret. Secret. So once our promises were found to be genuine, more than 50 boys returned to their families in that one year. So that is how, if you understand the psyche of a society, if you understand how people in that particular region, you know, behave, you can achieve success without firing even a single bullet. So this is what the team security forces achieved in that one year. Operation Ma, according to you, was a huge success. And if you say, and if 50, uh, 50 militants, 50 boys who had, who had sort of taken to terrorism did come back, uh, it was definitely a huge, huge success. But were there any false alarms in between? Were there any um, problems that you encountered? When surrender So, incident There were numerous times when these boys were being forced by the handlers or the terrorist uh, leaders, especially the Pakistani terrorists forced to stay with them and not return. And those incidents were also handled by intervention by various other uh, means like Malvi Sahib's, the elders, the school teachers, the friends of the terrorists, and even at times some earlier terrorists who had returned. So we had to do a multi-pronged approach to achieve success and save the lives of these boys. I always say for a person with a gun in his hand, a security forces personnel, killing a terrorist is not a big thing. It is just a matter of time. Since he has picked up a gun, he will be killed today or tomorrow or day after. But to save a life is the most important thing. So we carried out a mission where we wanted to save lives. And we got a lot of support from the public, from the normal uh, relatives and everyone around. Because our intentions were pure, and that is where we stood by our word, and which was believed. Even today, some boys are in touch with me in various uh, places. They are doing various jobs. So it feels so nice when you get a message from a boy who otherwise would have been a dead man today. So this is how... Tell, tell, us, tell, us, tell, us, tell us about... Sir, tell us, sorry to interrupt you. Tell us about some of... You said you are in touch with some of these boys. What is it that they are doing today? What kind of jobs See, do they hold? What kind they, of work they, they had do? different types of educational qualification backgrounds. So keeping in with their age, with their education background, they were you know, given alternate placements. Some in the government uh, establishments, some in civil areas within Kashmir, some in the Jammu region, some Pathan Court, Amritsar, Chandigarh, and even uh, beyond. So they are doing different types of jobs. Some are running a small little shop. Someone is, uh, you know, driving an auto rickshaw. Someone is. So they are now happy. And within the limitations or the restrictions of their qualifications, they have been adjusted. And they, all of them are very, very happy now. At least the mothers are happy that the sons are alive and they are with the family. Sounds wonderful. Uh, so we've spoken about, uh, we've spoken about Pulwama. We've spoken about 
Operation Ma that was launched soon after. Um, talk to us about the Balakot strike. You know, do you believe it to be the perfect government response? Uh, how was this operation conceived? Uh, tell us the inside story. Tell us some details. See, Operation Balakot or Balakot airstrikes or Balakot surgical airstrikes is referred to by various names. It was a very well planned, very well worked out, very well coordinated operation. And it was a perfect response to the Pulwama ID blast, which was carried out on behest of Pakistan and ISI by Pakistan based terrorist organization, Jaish e Mohammed. Now, two, three lessons which are very clear in this Balakot air strikes were one is the resolve of the nation was showcased without a doubt. Nobody in the world had a doubt that India's resolve is very clear. We will hit back and it is that when the Air Force fully armed the fighter aircrafts when they cross international boundary and deliver the armaments in the enemy territory, it's technically as if you have joined a war. So when Indian aircrafts cross the line of control, they overflew Pakistan occupied Kashmir. They suppressed the Pakistani air defense. They did not allow Pakistani air force to react. Then they crossed the international boundary. As most of the viewers would be aware, Balakot is not in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Balakot is the proper Pakistan. So we carried out this air strike inside Pakistan and all our aircrafts returned safely to their base. So this type of an operation naturally has to be planned in great detail, great synchronization with all who are involved with it and great secrecy. And when this type of operation is carried out against a regular standing air force, a regular ground forces of a nation, that shows our military might, that shows our resolve as a nation, and that shows the determination of the government to hit back and hit back hard and hit back where it hurts. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there any moment, again, I'll go back to uh, the same question that I asked during the time of the Pulwana, Pulwama encounter. When this Balakot uh, strike was being planned and uh, just before execution, were there was there any hesitation in anybody's mind? Was there anything that stuck out uh, uh, for you? Ma'am, without going into any details of a specific operation, whenever a military operation is planned, inputs of all those who are involved, who have to execute, who have to support it, everyone's input is taken. All contingencies are worked out. All, you know, eventualities are worked out. And assets and resources are allocated to cover that contingency or eventuality. And then additional reserves are kept up the sleeve for some unforeseen contingencies. So it's so just a normal prepared planning. for the worst. Yes, to cater for anything worst or cater for which you had not thought of. So all these are the ways and the way the operations are planned. That's how these operations are planned at very, very high level and the total secrecy is maintained. And I'm giving you in general how operation is planned without going into specifics of any particular right. operation. And Understand this operation that. was planned up with a great precision and it was executed with an utmost surgical precision, with utmost professionalism by everyone involved, including the young pilots of Indian Air Force who actually done the job for the nation. Right, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, I know it was a very uh, forward question uh, because you're not allowed to share uh, many of those details, uh, but I still took a chance. But having said that and having spoken about Pulwama, I have to ask you the question about uh, because there, there was a lot of talk, there is a lot of talk about it being an intelligence failure. Do you believe that to be the case? Ma'am, I have again, uh, this particular specific question was Pulwama, uh, Bala, uh, an, uh, was Pulwama an intelligence failure. I have covered in great detail in my book, Kitne Gazi Aai, Kitne Gazi Gai. But I would like to once again share it here. Ma'am, intelligence is a cat and mouse game. And intelligence is a 24-7, 365 days game. Intelligence operations, when they are successful and you do not allow the enemy, I'm using the word enemy because all the terrorist 
organization in Kashmir are run and controlled by ISI and Pakistan, which who is enemy of India. So whenever intelligence operations thought any attempt by terrorist organizations or the enemy, we do not pat our backs, we do not go to the media, we do not come out in the open, open domain and declare our successes unless one odd incident for different reasons. Why we do not declare our successful intelligence operations is because if we declare it, then the enemy would come to know how we could control it or how we could not allow or how we did not allow it to happen. Our capabilities in physical domain and technical domain would get compromised and the enemy next time would plan his operations trying to overcome the situation which allowed the previous operations to be unsuccessful. Right. So having said that, if there are 100 operations which terrorist or enemy has planned and 99 of them have not been allowed to happen and one or incident unfortunately goes through and this time that one incident was very, very big and I am again feeling very sorry for this and, and unfortunately Pulwama incident could not be tackled in time. Now, if out of 100, one incident is not tackled in time, and unfortunately, again, that happens to be a big one, that does not mean the intelligence agencies are not doing the job. And within the next 72 hours, as I explained earlier, the same intelligence agencies in the same area of Kashmir hit back and eliminated that module. Same intelligence right. agencies hit back another 10 days on 24th of February and avoided Palwama 2, which we can talk again. Palawama 2, again, uh, you know, that self-detonating uh, terrorist had already made a video like Palawama. He already the explosives were there, everything was there, and there was a, they were ready to carry out a Palawama 2. And the same intelligence agencies made sure they don't carry it out, and they were again eliminated in Turigam on 24th of February. So, if and, one and as you said... Has, we, yeah. we so I would say much it was, I would say too it was because of that. not an intelligence failure. It's just one of those unfortunate incidents. Because we have to understand these intelligence operatives, they work in the field, putting their lives at stakes at times. I have seen intelligence officers in my command in Kashmir getting fired upon, getting injured in the field. And since they have to operate in covert operations at times, they do not have a much backup behind them. So please, my request is spare a thought for the people who are doing the job for the country. They're away from their families. They're taking the risk. They're risking their lives. Intelligence is a very difficult job. And they are doing it precisely the way it is supposed to be done. My salute to the intelligence people. They're doing a tremendous job. And we must believe in them. Absolutely, sir. And you know, I you spoke about Pulwama too. I tried to sort of uh, interrupt you there in between because... Uh, I wanted to know more, but uh, uh, tell us about Pulwama too, because as you pointed out, when there is a success, you don't hear much about it. What exactly had the terrorists planned and and uh, uh, what do you think, uh, how was it intercepted? This was uh, intercepted on 24th of February 2019, exactly 10 days after Pulwama and about seven days after the elimination of Ghazi and his module. There is a small village in South Kashmir again called Turi Gam. It was in this village that these terrorists, again with a suicide bomber, had got together. They had made the video exactly in the same manner as the earlier uh, suicide bomber had made. That video at that time we had shared with the uh, some media channels. And when again the intelligence agencies got a tip off, that this is being planned and they're hiding in so and so house in village Turigam. Security forces again laid a cordon and hit that place. Deputy SP Aman Kumar Thakur of Jammu Kashmir Police, he lost his life. He made the supreme sacrifice in that operation. And this is how that Pulwama 2 was avoided. Imagine if Pulwama 2 had also happened within 10 days of Pulwama 1. You can imagine what would have been the morale of the country. So the Absolutely. same intelligence agencies did this operation, same security forces carried out this operation and eliminated the module before they could strike. Similarly, a third operation was also carried out, which happened in uh, south of uh, Banihal, in uh, near Banihal only, in south of uh, Pir Panjal, where again a 
a similar module was intercepted and destroyed. So security forces, intelligence agencies are always on the job. Most of the times we do not go to the town to announce our successes, but we are on the job 24-7. Absolutely, sir. And thank you for that. Uh, and, and now I just want to shift gears and come to the third part of this podcast where I want to talk about the revocation of Article 317. Now, you were General, General Officer Commanding in Kashmir uh, when Parliament revoked 370 and Jammu and Kashmir's special status was withdrawn on August 5, 2019. When and how did you get to know about the revocation? Because from what I've read in your book, you've spoken about this breakfast meeting with Amit Shah. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, Article 370 and 35A were revoked by a parliament decision. As in a democratic country, it always happens. I want to clarify two, three things before I get into this uh, breakfast meeting with the Home Minister. Firstly, there is a false Pakistani propaganda and narrative that Article 370 and 35A were for a specific religion group only. I would like to say Article 370 and 35A were the administrative provisions of a constitution, constitution applicable to all the subjects of the then state of Jammu and Kashmir, irrespective of their religious beliefs. Article 370 and 35A were equally applicable to Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, Parsis, Christians residing in the then state of Jammu and Kashmir. So this is one aspect which needs clarification. Otherwise, the propaganda is it's about a particular religion and a particular religion has been targeted by revocation of Article 370 and 35A. Second point is Article 370 and 35A were the temporary and transitional provisions of constitution. And the Indian constitution was amended to remove these provisions. And this is not the first time the Indian constitution has been amended. Prior to this, more than 100 times, I think 106 times to be specific, Indian constitution has been amended by the act of parliament. So there is nothing new which has happened. And again, the bifurcation oh. of the state into unit territory of Ladakh and unit territory of JNK. This is not the first time in history of India states have been bifurcated or trifurcated. Punjab, again being a border state, was trifurcated into Punjab, Haryana, and Himachal. Bihar has been mm. bifurcated into Bihar and Jharkhand. Uttarakhand has been carved out of Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Andhra and Telangana have been bifurcated, and there are examples. So anyone to say that it was specifically targeted about a particular section of society is a false propaganda. Now coming to this breakfast meeting, as everyone in the media, everyone in uh, otherwise, the, there was general feeling that something is going to happen. So 1st of July 2019, Shri Amanath Yatra was to commence. And on 26th June and 27th June, uh, four, days, four or five days prior to that, the Union Home Minister, Mr. Amit Shah, came to Jammu and Kashmir to review the situation on ground as also takes stock of the security of Shri Amanath Yatra. So 26 June, he was in uh, Sirinagar. We had a number of meetings and uh, where everyone, starting from the DGP, the Chief, uh, Chief Secretary, Home Secretary, other law enforcing agencies, intelligence agencies, army, that is self and the army commander, we attended all those meetings the, throughout the day. And the last meeting, I think, finished by about 11.30 in the night. When I got back home, on the intervening night of 26th and 27th June, I got a call at about 2 o'clock that there is a breakfast meeting with the Union Home Minister tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Mm. So I said, okay. Then at 3 o'clock, I got a call again as to what would I prefer to have for breakfast. Right. So my answer was, uh, whatever everyone else will have it, I will also have. But then... That is when I was told it's uh, not a meeting of everyone. It's only one on one between the Union Home Minister and myself as a Chinar Corps Commander. So anyway, I reached there at seven o'clock and uh, the breakfast spread, of course, was dhokla, aluka pranthas and uh, various other things. And then we started discussing about, again, I said about contingencies, eventualities, what will happen. And as you are aware, uh, there were statements made by even the former chief ministers. 35 and 370 ko kuch hoga, 
कश्मीर में तिरंगे को कंधा देने वाला कोई नहीं होगा खून की नदियां बह जाएंगी सो वी डिस्कस एवरी थिंग एंड एट दैट टाइम आई वॉज नॉट श्योर वट इज इन दिंग बट एज द मीटिंग प्रोग्रेस्ड स्लोली एंड स्लोली थिंग्स क्रिस्टलाइज एंड आई मस्ट से है जूरियन होम मिनिस्टर वॉज वेरी क्लियर ही है एब्सोल्यूट बैकग्राउंड नॉलेज ऑफ द सिचुएशन he knew exactly the situation on the ground and he knew exactly what aspects are matters of concern if some action is taken by the government and where all things can erupt on the line of control in the hinterland so we discussed all the things we discussed all the eventualities and ultimately it came down to assurances okay do you think it is possible i said yes sir we can do it and the team security forces i was very sure of team security forces capabilities that we will be able to maintain peace and there will be no problem so the final thing was the zimmewari kiski hai i said to zimmewari to meri aur i am responsible of my assurance which i am giving you that we will be able to meet maintain peace as a team security forces and that is when i also made one more statement which was appreciated by him which is again given in detail in the book i said agar kisi ko itihas likhna hai तो किसी ना किसी को इतिहास बनाना पड़ेगा इफ यू हैव टू राइट हिस्ट्री समवन हैज टू मेक हिस्ट्री सो आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट टुडे आई एम पार्ट ऑफ दैट हिस्ट्री वी मेड हिस्ट्री एंड वी रोट हिस्ट्री एंड आई रोट अबाउट द हिस्ट्री इन माय बुक कितने गाजी आए कितने गाजी गए लेकिन आपको आपको इमीडिएटली जब जब उन्होंने बताया कि ऐसा करने वाले हैं डिड यू डिड यू feel any apprehensions because obviously it was not was it a decision was it a, a decision you were expecting because it must have come as a shock to you i'm having served in the army for uh, almost uh, 38 39 years at that time and having seen various situations in kashmir in jammu region in northeast manipur nagaland having seen brass tracks having been around during kargil operations in valley and other places one was seasoned soldier and one had full confidence in the capabilities of the army as also the capabilities of the jammu and kashmir police and crpf here i would like to make a special mention about jammu and kashmir police jammu and kashmir police is probably one of the finest police organizations in counter terrorist operation in the world they are so okay. professional they are so thorough they are officered by absolutely top class officers their constabulary is dedicated committed and very highly motivated they have the state of the art equipment and they are connect with the public is tremendous the type of information which jammu and kashmir police gets from the public of kashmir i have not seen that type of a thing anywhere else they are a very fine organization and crpf of course is a tremendously motivated and very well officer outfit so we had a great confidence in each other so there were no apprehensions the only thing is how to go about it how to prepare it we had about 40 days and most important was we had to keep it a secret so all right. the that was very really difficult yes it was challenging there nothing difficult <laughs> it was challenge and we took it as an opportunity all the preparations all the consultations about this happened in the chinar corps commander that is self chinar corps commander's residence in his drawing room the four walls nothing not a shred of paper went out of those four walls everyone who was to be only need to know they is to meet there discuss leave everything there under my supervision and that is how till 5th of august nobody not even pakistan not even the people inside india who are not very happy with this uh, thing nobody came to know that what's going to happen so biggest challenge was to keep it a secret at the same time prepare for it today people you know compliment you people tell you very nice good you could maintain peace no lives lost but right we were sure on 27th of june morning 7 o'clock that no lives will be lost we will be able to maintain peace that is the strength of the team security forces that's so reassuring to hear sir but uh, uh, just wanted to as a follow up uh, to that question ask you uh, you must have prepared again as you said for any operation you prepare for prepare for every eventuality even the worst eventuality uh, the worst of course did not happen but did you expect that uh, uh, anything that that happened 
that you were not expecting or anything that you expected that did not happen? We had catered for all the contingencies and eventualities. And fortunately for us and the nation and Kashmir, nothing untoward happened. And we could keep Pakistan at bay. We could keep all the proxies of Pakistan at bay. And we could make sure that Huriyat or any supporters of Pakistan or the terrorist and the terrorist could not do anything. Those three months after 5th of August 2019 were the most peaceful three months in the history of Kashmir terrorism. Not a single civilian life was lost to security forces bullets. Not a single property, private or public was damaged. And actually we had given two aims to ourselves, two mission statements to ourselves as team security forces. First was, it's the writ of the government, it is the order of the government, abrogation of Article 370.35a will be implemented. Hindustan ki sar zumi ke ek ek inch ke upar Hindustan ki sarkar ka hukam chale ka. That will be implemented. And second aim we gave to ourselves was, while implementing this order, we will make sure no life, no life is lost, no property is damaged, like I said, public or uh, uh, private, and peace will be maintained. We could achieve both these aims instead of, in spite of the ecosystem present there. There is a very vicious ecosystem prevalent in Kashmir, which has Pakistan, ISI, Huriyat, OGWs, terrorist supporters, terrorists, some NGOs, local vernacular media, and politicians. This ecosystem does not want Kashmir to become peaceful. This ecosystem does not become want for peace to return. This ecosystem does not want terrorism to finish. We have to make sure this ecosystem does not get a, even a whiff of it. And that is how this ecosystem was also kept in the dark, as was Pakistan. And there is again a one more thing which is there ever since the terrorists had started boycotting the elections. Very little percentage of votes are polled and people get elected and the governments are formed. And that little percentage is allowed by the terrorists to be polled. So when the government is formed, it is a payback time. So whenever there is a lower level recruitment in the administration, may it be police, banking, revenue, or uh, any other department, education, or any other, so their sympathizers or their recommendation of Hurriyat or Jamaitis, the people are enrolled. And over the last 30, 35 years, these people at the lowest ebb of the demo bureaucracy have now come to the middle of the lower bureaucracy. They are the Thane Me Munchi, SHO, Primary School ka Headmaster, hai, Rural Bank ka Manager, hai, you know, Urban Bank ka Assistant Manager, hai, Patwari. Hai. They are the people who are in touch with the public. They are the contact of the government with the public. And this is the uh, layer which is corrupted, which is pro Huriyat, pro Jamaat Islami. As the dialogue in, and they are the people who are the biggest hurdle. As there was a dialogue in this the movie Kashmir Files, Sarkar Beshak Unki hai, system to Mara hai. This is the system which was being referred to. This is the part of the system which over the decades, last three decades plus, has been allowed to creep into the administration system. And good thing is now action is being taken against them. So this is the circumstances or the environment which we are working under and we came up trumps. Thank you, sir. I mean, your contribution obviously is is uh, something that uh, no one can ever uh, uh, I, uh, live up to. Uh, uh, amazing contribution, not just you, the entire armed forces. Thank you so much for your services to the nation. Uh, I want to just uh, leave this podcast on the note of uh, a personal message from you who served in Kashmir uh, throughout your uh, uh, decades of your service in the army. Uh, what's your message, personal message to the nation? Ma'am, I'm too small a person to give a message to the nation, but I would attempt to give a message to the youth who follow me on social media, who always walk up to me at the airports, railway station, or whenever I go to the market. The message is defense forces are just one part of the national assets. 
lot of youngsters want to join army the defense aspirants and for some reason if you are not able to make it army is not the only way to contribute to the national uh, nation building and as far as going to war is concerned nations go to war defense forces only fight on the borders it is a comprehensive national power of the nation which is applied against the enemy and that right. includes journalists that include businessmen that includes students teachers professors that includes every section of the society we all contribute to the nation building we all contribute to the comprehensive national power of the nation so if you are not able to join a particular job say you are not able to join the defense forces that's not under the world you have many options to do the same job of serving the nation in many other capacities find out your talent find out your capabilities find out your pluses and work on them and excel in those so i would request all the youngsters who are listening to this podcast don't get disheartened by small little you know unsuccessful attempt here and there if the success has come to you easy it will not sustain if you had failures then when you achieve success you are a much more experienced person failures are part of success i always say girna buri baat nahi hai gir kar tootna buri baat nahi hai toot kar kisi kone mein pade rehna buri baat hai toot kar judna himmat hai jud kar udna himmat hai so never give up there is always a, another way of doing things and all the very best to all the youngsters who are listening thank you and jai hind very inspiring words sir thank you so much for uh sparing the time to join us uh, for this podcast we look forward to hearing from you again thank you viewers for watching we will keep coming back to you with more stay tuned to hindustan times thank you jai thank you sir.